Hello friends, I am Dhawal Kumar Surti and in the series of videos about freeze dryer, in this specific video we will understand more, of, more about the structure of freeze dryer and the various steps of freeze drying process. These all videos are also available on my YouTube channel titled Dhawal Kumar Surti. So you can go to my channel and watch many more such videos related to the pharmaceutical industry. You will be able to have very much technical knowledge and knowledge about the regulatories and audits and many more things. So let's start with my video. So we'll understand about the structure of freeze dryer at beginning. So freeze dryer basically has a five system, a refrigeration system, vacuum system, control system, product chamber or manifold and condenser. So as we can see, there is a chamber, pink color is a chamber part. It is a circular, somewhere there are rectangle chambers also. Heated shelf, so shelf for the loading of the containers, which can be heated and cooled. Door, a compressor, compressor we will need for the refrigeration uh, to cool the shelf, to cool the product, to freeze the product. We need vacuum pump to apply very high level of vacuum. So freeze drying, as we discussed in the, my previous video, Freeze drying is basically process of sublimation where the product is first frozen and then by application of high vacuum from the solid state, it directly goes to the vapor phase. So we need vacuum pump for this process. So let's understand step of freeze dry. First step is loading of freeze dryer. So we have to load the containers into the freeze dryer, the filled containers which are subjected for the live realization, we have to load into the freeze dryer. Here the filled and half stopper vials are loaded in the freeze dryer. The fill volume, container size and temperature during the loading will be according to the product. So different product have different container size, different fill volume and different temperature. So it will vary, but basic step of loading will remain the same. So here we can see filled half stopper vials in a liquid state so it is before we subject the wires to the freeze drying process. As you can see, there are stoppers, but they are half stopper. They are not full stopper. The reason for keeping not stoppering the full or keeping the some slot is that during the freeze drying process, when the product undergoes drying, so we need some space, some gap, so that moisture can escape from the product. For that, it is half stopper and not full stopper. Full stopper will completely seal the vial and will not allow the flow of or will not allow the vapor to escape from the vial during the dying, drying process. For that purpose, we need half stoppering. Hope this is very clear now. And this is the design of the stopper. These are specially designed stopper, which we call slotted rubber stopper, which have a slot. So it will not fully stopper when applied pressure and it will load it into the freeze dryer. So this slot helps to place keep the stopper half stopper. It will not completely stopper. Now we will understand the structure of chamber. So we will see the in, uh, structure inside the chamber, how it looks. So this is a basic structure of chamber. This is a rectangle chamber. And as we can see, there are shelves in the chamber. So this is how the freeze dried chamber looks from inside when the door is open. Now we'll understand how the half stopper wires. So these are the half stopper wires which are going for the loading into the freeze dryer. So this is how while filled and arranged onto the shelf and then by one push it goes to the chamber area or chamber onto the shelf. So this is how the half stopper wire looks when they are going to the freeze dryer loading process. In small freeze dryer at lab scale, the same process can be done manually where the wires into the trays are loaded into the freeze dryer manually. But this is a small freeze dryer, lab scale freeze dryer where there is no much concern of the sterility or no much concern of the environmental conditions. In the commercial scale, it will be automatic process under laminar airflow. As we know, laminar airflow we need for the providing grade A protection to the wire. 
now how the vials loaded into the freeze dryer looks so this is how they look when they are loaded onto the shelf of the freeze dryer we can see vial on the shelf half stopper and the product is fill, uh, liquid product is filled inside it is not still subjected to the freeze drying process here we, we can see the overall uh, long distance view how it looks from the outside when the vials are loaded into the freeze dryer steps of freeze drying the first step is freezing so here the liquid product filled in vials or ampules is completely frozen freezing is an important as unfrozen product may expand outside of the container when placed under vacuum so if your product is not frozen completely and if you apply high vacuum then it will expand outside the container it will spill outside the container or will be sucked out outside the container self freeze dryer allows the precise control of cooling rates which affects the product freezing rates and crystal size so we need a specific crystal size so freezing is important freezing rate is important we need a specific crystal size specific crystal structure larger ice crystals improve the speed of the freezing drying process because of the large vapor pathways left behind in the dried portion of the product as the ice crystals are sublimed so we need larger ice crystals improve the speed of freeze drying process so that's why the freezing at precise control cooling rate is very very important once you have frozen the product then very next step and very important step is evacuation so we have to first for the evacuation purpose the condenser is understand it's not the chamber the attached condenser is cooled to the temperature less than 40 degree so as to facilitate the condensation of the vapor generated from the frozen product during the drying process so this condensation temperature can be different based on the freezing temperature it should be less than the temperature of the frozen product so if your frozen product you are freezing the product is minus 40 then your condensation should be, temperature should be less than minus 40 so that vapor when we apply vacuum the vapor from chamber it will travel to condenser and it has to be condensed under the condenser coil so for that we need a, a temperature less than minus 40 in the condenser after condenser cooling vacuum pumps are started vacuum valve is opened and the main valve separating the chamber and condenser is being opened so as to apply vacuum in chamber so first understand we have frozen the product we have now cooled the condenser so the both the chamber and condenser are now ready for the freeze drying process so what we will do we will start vacuum pump apply vacuum and open the main valve which is separating chamber and condenser so that vacuum will be applied and it will start the sublimation process and the vapor which are generated will be condensed onto the condenser coils we will see in next slides how condenser coils looks like vacuum valve is provided on condenser hence any vapor generated from chamber will travel through the main valve to condenser and will condense on the condenser coils in form of ice now we'll see how the condenser coil looks like so this is how condenser coil looks this is a pipe structure through which refrigerant gas is passed so that the temperature less than minus 40 will be achieved and this allows the water vapor to directly condense onto the this coils now next step is primary drying in the primary drying the bulk water removed from the product during freeze drying is via sublimation so water whatever water or the solvent which is frozen is dried through the process of sublimation where the freeze ice crystal during the primary drying step organic solvents are also removed during the primary drying so from the ice state it will directly go to the vapor state through the process of sublimation under high vacuum primary drying is a very slow process conducted at cooler temperature safely below the product's critical collapse temperature so product critical collapse temperature is the temperature at which if it reaches that temperature the ice will melt and product will collapse so we have to 
keep the temperature well below the critical coolex temperature all method of heat transfer such as conduction convection and radiation are employed during the primary drying process so hope primary drying is now clear the water or solvent which is frozen is under high vacuum directly goes to the vapor phase which is we call primary drying now the second step is secondary drying step what happens in secondary drying in addition to the free ice that is sublimated during the primary drying there remains a substantial amount of water molecules that are bound to the product so the frozen water is removed in the primary drying but there are water molecules which are bound to the product which are connected or linked with the product through chemical reaction this water molecule has to be removed in the secondary drying process this water is removed by the process called desorption so in primary drying we call it sublimation in secondary drying we call it desorption so desorption is a basically secondary drying process secondary drying is done at increased temperature because all of the ice free ice has been removed during the primary drying hence there is no chance of melting of product or product collapse some freezer have the facility to remove the samples for moisture content determination in uh, in secondary drying step based on the which the drying step can be terminated so <clears throat> in the secondary drying process at the end of secondary drying process you achieve the required moisture content into the product in order to determine the, the this moisture content we have to remove the product from the freeze dryer so some freeze dryer have the facility where you can hold the cycle open the chamber and take samples and then again continue with the cycle now partial aeration or pre aeration so once we have completed the secondary drying process we achieved the required moisture content we have to break the high level of vacuum to a certain level which is we call partial aeration so once secondary drying step is completed partial aeration also called pre aeration is being performed usually using inert gas like nitrogen so as to leave some vacuum inside the vials after this we go for the full stopping full stopping is to fully stopper the vials so that now there will be no contact with the external atmosphere and the freeze dried product inside the vial will remain it will maintain its moisture content and will maintain the required properties required physical and chemical characteristic during the shelf life so once the partial aeration is completed the vials are full stoppered by lowering the freeze dried cells one by one this can be automatic step in freeze dried recipe or can be performed in manual mode by pushing the full stoppering button so mostly the all the freeze dried have the full stoppering process is automation as well as you can also go to the manual mode lower the freeze uh, cells one by one so that all the stoppers are fully stoppered all the vials will be fully stoppered once the full stoppering is completed self position is restored to its original position once the freeze dryer full stopping completed now we have to perform the final aeration so we have done the partial aeration partial aeration is based uh, varies with the product to product it can be 0.9 bar it can be 0.8 bar considering one one bar atmosphere as a atmospheric pressure now we have to perform full aeration so we'll bring the freeze dried chamber to the normal atmospheric pressure and it is basically done with the compressor because we don't now need uh, inert gas because our vials are fully stopped so we will use compressor to bring the chamber to the atmospheric pressure condenser aeration is also done after chamber aeration so condenser aeration also has to be done door of the freeze dryer is opened at aseptic area site to unload the vials so this is a sterile product so we have to open the door at aseptic area site to unload the vials the product is sterile so we have to provide a grade a protection so we have to unload at the aseptic area site under grade a the vials are then sent to the capping machine the stopper is done now we have to seal the vial so we need, we have to cap this vial now i'll show you the picture of self before and after stoppering so we will have a better clarity how it looks 
so on the right side you can see after sopering and on the left side you can see before sopering so before sopering the shelves are fully open for the demonstration purpose it is without wires but with wires also it will be the similar situation where the the before stoppering wires will the self will be uh, at distance from each, each other and when we perform the full stoppering it will be pressed one by one so that it will achieve the full stoppering into the chamber this is how if we have the wires this is how it will look after the full stoppering in freeze dryer and once full stopper we have to again bring back the shelf to the normal position we have to bring it at a distance and it will look like the wires with white powder on the left on the right side where we can see that wires are full stopper and now shelf are again restored to the normal position after that we can start with the unloading process this is the pictorial demonstration on the left you can see three wires which are half stopper and liquid state on the right hand side you can see the wires which are fully stopper the the product is frozen the freeze dried product final product the powdered cake is in the wire so this is the before freeze drying process how it looks and after freeze drying process how it looks this is the pictorial demonstration of the product so this is how wires after freeze drying looks into the final container final in the vial so i will end my this video here in the my next video we will understand more about example of good and rejected vial so subscribe to my channel be in touch and we'll be understanding or sharing the knowledge more and more which will help us to gain knowledge and help better serve the pharmaceutical industry thank you thank you for my watching my video